Does cheap marketing work for vintage? This is a great one as well, because there's so many ways that you can utilize cheap marketing. But this video I'm gonna talk about, does it actually work? So there's obviously an understanding from most people that if you wanna get your brand seen or you wanna get your store seen by external people that aren't within your friendship group, aren't within like a small space, aren't within the people who follow you, then you need to put money on adverts so that you can be seen by new people. A lot of what things like TikTok and Facebook will do as well is they will allow you the option for them, like the apps themselves, to kind of figure out who they're gonna send it to and stuff like that. But essentially, we wanna know, is the cheap, like, is the cheap uh, traffic, is it good traffic? I have had experience with this, and I'm going to break down a, f a few thoughts I have about this. Now, this is for people who work on their own website more so, because um, if you are somebody who sells on purely on Depop, honestly, I wouldn't spend money on marketing for people to go to your Depop store. I would work on maybe building an Instagram following and TikTok, but don't ever spend money to advertise people to go to your Depop or third party store. Because essentially, you're spending money to send people to an app that's charging you commission to sell. Um, that's, it, that's where I was like, no, I'd never do that. Um, but that's my, that's my take on it, okay? But I'm talking to the people now for cheap, like does cheap marketing work for vintage sellers? Now, when you have your own website, you've got one luxurious, point uh, about it, which I would say, and that is that anybody that goes onto your www dot has the intention for you to like, has the intention for you? That makes no sense. Basically, if somebody's going on your website, if you get 50 store hits a day, if you get 200 a week, if you get 50 a month, all 50, all 100, all of the 50 of those people are going on the website and any of those potential outcomes will benefit you directly as opposed to benefit in any external third party platform, any other hands that are like, tell you, when you get into business, especially vintage, there's a lot of greedy hands. They're like crabs all around, I tell you. But let's get back to this point and I will explain what I think about the actual, uh, the, the effectiveness of the cheapness of this. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Instagram boosted posts, right? And the boost feature for Facebook that Meta has, the, the Instagram has. Because obviously everybody knows, and I'm not doing this as like a, a tech 101 lesson, I'm sure you all know that Facebook and Instagram are owned uh, by the Meta group. So with that, when you advertise on Instagram, you have the option to advertise on Facebook, yada, yada, yada. However, what both of the platforms do is they offer you the option to boost pre-made content that you have uploaded. So you could have a post that you've just done, like a flat lay of some uh, graphic t-shirts, get ready for summer, and then it will off offer it in like a little blue rectangle just below uh, the image and above the comments to boost the post. How effective is that for how cheap it can be? Now, like most people will tell you with adverts that you do, a-B testing is an incredible part of the understanding. You cannot make one advert, post it, go hope it goes all right, get annoyed when it doesn't go well, and have only have ran one. Like you've got to run countless tests, countless different copies, countless different like demographics, all these different ways to basically, survival of the fittest, compare individual little micro points and look at what worked, what didn't, but spend. You're going like fast away. Fast away, I am speaking like terribly today. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, I'm still upset that we're underwater. Hopefully by the time this video is out, I'm not. But um, the building's underwater, not we're underwater. Um, but no, anyway, I'm tangenting. When you post a photo, right, or when you use the boosted feature, obviously, you can't make any adjustments on like the copies and things like that because you're using a post that you've already pre-made. However, what you can control is the demographic, the audience it sends to, and the budget you have. Now, the reason why 
these, these options have a great entry point is because you can spend as little as a quid a day, one pound per day to run one of these little campaigns. Uh, and it's just like a boosted, boot one of your boosted photos. Now, so many different people on the internet will tell you what a good uh, cost of click is. And it's different for everywhere. However, for people who use Facebook boosted posts and things like that, you can get to a point where individual clicks are costing you between two and five P per click. You probably know if you've got a good copy of an advert, if you get a cheaper cost per click. But, Sven, I've made the content, I've uploaded this photo that I've made to Instagram. Two days later, I've put on a little boosted post. I've shared it to Facebook, so I'll do the same on there. And I'm spending like two pound a day, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting 100 clicks a day, say. Say that it's costing you two p a click. From them, from a 2p a click demographic, how valuable is that, like, is that audience? And if I'm honest, if you're spending as little as £2 and you're getting people on the website, I don't know how, how, how good the quality of the audience will be. But let's just play devil's advocate because I don't know your business model. I don't know how your website looks. I don't know what what you do on that side of things. So you might have a really good call to action button that gets people spending money on your website fast. However, the reason why I think that it's good to have cheap traffic being sent to your website, even if you spent 30 pound a month for three months on an advert that was getting you 50 people a day to your website, and you look at that, if I spend 90 pounds for three months Am I going to convert more than 90 on that? I can't tell you. I can't give you the answer to that. But my logic behind it is that you could, say that your website's fresh out the oven, right? And it's there and you've got 50 products on there and you go straight for an Instagram boosted post and you're like, right, I'm just gonna get a boosted post on it. I'm gonna run this up five pound a day, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna set my demographic to like London, people who like streetwear. I'm gonna do all this normal dem like breakdowns and, and I'm gonna run the advert. And then you run it for like a week and you're like, I've spent five pound a day, I've spent 35 quid and I've had zero sales. Like you could run that same advert with that same budget for two months and have zero sales. The question I don't know whether I'm answering yet is, are Facebook and Instagram boosts good? Does the cheap price you pay actually work to generate an audience? Um, and any other thoughts? And I would say that if you just want traffic through your door on your website, then just make sure that you either have one of two things on your website. You either have a heat map so if you work on Shopify stores, get something like Lucky Orange on your store. What that will do is it will tell you where the people are coming from that are visiting your website. And then at least if you can watch where the audience from the Instagram boosts, what they're doing, they might just come on and 99% of them might just come on and leave. Like it could be, it could be bot clicks, it could be, just peop it could be just incorrectly targeted people, whatever it is. But the heat map through the website will allow you to actually see what those people do. I used to have it on and you, 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 again, unfortunately guys, you're gonna have to pay quite a bit of money to see this information and it is regular monthly money that goes out. But something like a heat map by, via trying to see what this cheap marketing does will just allow you to understand. It shows you, it basically shows you where people go on the website, how long they spend on pages, how long until they jump off and you can just take that, intel it, analyze it and go, Okay, I spent, so let's take the guy who spent five pound a day. He could go, I've spent 35 pound this week. I've had 155 clicks and I watched the heat map and only 2% of the people went on the actual products. So what would that tell you? That would probably tell you that cheap traffic isn't very good. Um, however, it just depends on what your outcome you want from this is. So the second point for something that I would say you basically got to think, the, 
This is an analogy I would say. It's like being a beekeeper but catching flies. Just go with me for one minute on this. If you're a beekeeper and your intention is to look for bees, you're looking for exactly what you're looking for, you can't be mad that you're going to catch a lot of things that are just going to fall into the same net. If you create an advert or like you use one of these little boosted features off an app and you think you're creating a very accurate demographic or you've maybe let Facebook and Instagram run with it, because of how low the spend is on these adverts, you're always going to catch people that... Like people will click on ads with no intentions of even browsing because the ad's there. Maybe they're just annoyed by the fact that it's there. Whatever it is, people will just click on adverts. But the point I want to get to is that you will spend money targeting a lot of people that might not care two ways about your brand, might not even like anything about it, but they might just click it. But the way to catch... The way to catch like good flies from the net or to just, my analogy that I was trying to get to is that you're gonna get, you're trying to catch bees but you might get flies as well. Is that if somebody's coming on your website and that's cost you two P for them to click, you've got to have the biggest incentive for them to leave with something. And when I say leave with something, I mean you leave with something from their experience of coming and going. And that is email pop-ups. Now, these are, the smartest and most efficient ways to basically, to understand if that traffic, you say, right, if I spent a pound a day right now on my store and I said, right, I'm gonna run this advert for a year, 365 pound, I'm gonna run it for a year, one pound, and I'm gonna get 50 people a day clicking on my site, say, like, say it's not even 50, because that'd be two P, say, Say I get 30, let's just do the maths on this. Say I get 30 clicks a day and it's costing me 3p. Like, again, I actually was getting that because I'd targeted different things. It might be 10p. Let's just say it's 10p per click. Go with it, right? Say you're getting 10 clicks a day and I run that for 365 days, 3,650 potential clicks from that. Now, say even if you said the average sign up rate of people that visit your site is 2%. That could be 73 sign ups in a year. All you'd need to do is make sure that once they sign up, they get a code or they get something to use straight away that they can use on the website and the chance of them spending is gonna be increased. When people don't have a clue who you are and they come to your website, even if they've seen an advert, they, most people, go on so many websites and they are incentivized like that. If you go on, and I don't mean to promote like fast fashion and stuff, if you go on ASOS, you go on Zara, how quickly, as just a bystander going by, count how many offers you are shown in five seconds of being on a website like that, whether it's your mobile, whether it's the computer. Because even if they were sending out cheap traffic, don't get me wrong, big companies, different budgets, however, the principle of if they used cheap adverts or try to get cheap marketing, how would it work? It would probably be very effective because they've got so many calls to actions. This was quite a heavy one actually. I think I went quite into my mind with trying to explain it, but what I'm trying to get to with this is if you are running a website, what one thing I would promote is, it is good to try free traffic. It is good to try cheaper alternatives because if you start a website, it's obvious that you want people to see you. And if you want to be seen, the easiest way to do it without you putting a lot of effort in is to create some content and put very cheap adverts on it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that you can do like similar things with TikTok on their boosted feature, where you buy coins and put adverts on. To me personally, I rather stick with Instagram and Facebook when I did it, just because I felt like it was how it worked with Facebook and Instagram is that you basically have a budget of one pound a day and you can just leave that running constantly. So I could run an advert now and it could be constantly there for like one pound a day. Um, whereas with TikTok, it would just spend your budget and then you kind of like have to top up more coins. Still sort of similar principle, could probably get similar rates of clicks on, on both of them. But what I would say is that if you've not got your own website, this one won't appeal to you. If you have got your own website, I would advise trying a few A-B tests. So 
literally spend a pound a day on five different adverts for a week, factor in that 35 pound cost of trial to do it, give it a go, and I guarantee you there'll be a clear winner out of the five that you do. There'll be an easy clear winner where it's like, oh, every single other advert was costing me 25p a click. This one's just cost me 8p a click. Take that one, spend a pound a day still, and just keep letting that have that click. With, with this whole thing about cheap marketing as well, guys, you've got to be willing to spend money in order to expect a result of, of making anything. The only way I started to make money with what I did when I was working on my own website was funneling in cash to bring people's eyes to the screen. And once we did that, was getting anywhere between 10 and 15,000 people hitting the website every day. And from that, there was good quality with it. But I've made many other videos about that right now. Uh, so yeah, hope this one finds you well. And.